Okay, this Ask the Expert is kind of different than the others we, we have done. Um, we hear a lot that the 50% of the consultation with divorce lawyers has been happening in the last couple of weeks. And most people complain on the media that, oh my God, I stay all day with my partner. I cannot deal with this anymore. So I contact two people, then I think it's gonna be a good example that you can do it. They not only have five kids together, they have grandkids. They've been working together for 15 years under the same roof. And you know what? I Every time that I see them or interact with them, I envy it so much because they still have so much fun after 15 years. Dave and Dave, Davey, how are you guys doing? How you made it happen? Hi, Susan. Uh, how no, to work your, uh, okay, how to work with your partner and not kill it on the process. I know it sounds funny, but it's real. I have people like freaking out with this. Yep. And I think that you can give a lot of insight on this. Can you? Yeah, I think because I joined Dave's business after he'd been running it. So I've been, we've actually been working together for five years solidly together. And Dave's worked from home for those 15 years. So for him, he'd already built up his own process, his own routines, the way that he worked, and, and we worked from many navigated around it. So I was an employee for many, many years, 20 plus years. And I think the transition for me was a lot more difficult than it was for Dave to work with me rather than the way around. Because in those early years, and, and I still do do it today, I don't have a mindset that requires an office. So wherever Debbie was, or wherever I was, I was just used to working in any environment. So I think Tim Ferriss talks about not being wedded to an office and taking your business with you. I was doing that by mistake, primarily. Uh, yet working together, it did change. So I think the first thing, Susan, uh, candidly, is you've got to have a good foundation. <laughs> So and I think one of the things for us is that we've gone through lots of personal turmoil, challenges, children, um, family disruptions, and I think that stabilised Dave and I. Um, and I think having that very strong foundation doesn't mean that you don't argue, doesn't mean that I don't argue, doesn't mean that you don't have screaming matches and swearing matches and you want to you throw something. So, so, so she does. She, <laughs> I still she, do. She does. <laughs> Uh, but I think that foundation has, has has to be there and sometimes you don't know it's there and I think that's important. People will give up too easily and I genuinely do believe that. I think if you, something is really important to you, you'll fight for it. So I think foundation is, is fundamental but understanding what that actually is. Um, because a lot of people say I've got a really strong marriage or I've got, you know, I work with my best friend, etc. But it's like any relationship, isn't it? It's always going to have some tension. You don't agree on anything. Dave and I very rarely agree, um, which could be a recipe for complete disaster. But actually what it, we've learned, and it is learned, and we still have to continue that learning after all this time, is that um, we have to listen to each other. We have to listen. And I'm have learned. I might listen to this podcast <laughs> every day <laughs> from now on, just to hear her saying that, Susan, out loud. Yeah. I, now you have uh, documented information to <laughs> use against her. <laughs> Debbie, you got in trouble with this. I know, I'm going to be in such trouble with this. But I think for, and I'll speak on a very personal level, is for me, the first year was hellish. It was really difficult on many different levels. I had a very strong marriage, I knew that, and I absolutely adore my husband, I do. I think he's incredibly intelligent and very skilled at what he does. And so that's documented that's too. That's documented too. <laughs> There's a high level of respect, and I think that also sits in that foundation. But I think for me, what was the most difficult was this transition from employee, which I associated with independence, financially, emotionally. I could go out to work, I didn't have to be in the house. Um, I wasn't under anybody else's rule. It was all, you know, if something went wrong, I was responsible for it, If you know, because I was the person doing it. And coming into work in a, a small intentional business, which is ultimately was my husband's, and me then finding fault, which I'm brilliant at, um, and wanting to correct it, is I did it all the wrong way. I was moody. A bit. Well, yeah. you, but you definitively behave like a wife. So if, yeah, yeah. if we if we had a discussion that needed any type of either objective approach or 
multi-perceptual perspective, so look at it from different angles. Uh, she would just sit in the wife's seat if we were in disagreement. So we, we, we had to learn really quickly. Uh, well, you did. Uh, <laughs> I did. Um, you did, yeah. But you had to learn really quick. Because for me, you see, Susan, it's no different to being in any hostile business meeting, <laughs> client's office, boardroom, <laughs> difficult discussion mm. with, an, with an ex-partner. There's no, di no different to that for me in that situation at, at that moment in time. Um, and I had, to just, I had to be really patient. And, and wait for Debbie to go through that learning. And then, then once once she was open, we then had to find boundaries to work through that would so work. That was, uh, that's, the, that's the word that I was thinking. There are three things that I was thinking to us. Boundaries, communications, and rules. And rules not because, oh, these are the rules. No, the rules to cohabitate, to work together. So can we talk about boundaries, communication and rules? How you guys, because you guys has been under the same roof for a month and you still look like the first date having fun. So it's not fake. That's the way they are every day. I know them. So that's the reason I want to talk to you. So boundaries, uh, communication and rules. Okay, well, I'll start off with the boundaries one because I think this is a really fascinating one. And it's one that I've learned a lot and actually has benefited our marriage as well as work is that, I, like Dave just gave you an example. So I, sounds like I'm allowed to learn something. No, no, no. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm so, uh, just in reference to is, I really struggle to make that boundary distinction of wife and work. And it wasn't just a, the physical element of, of being in a building and environment. It was actually, I, 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 I really struggled for quite a while. And I would say that first year was, you know, 12 months is a long amount of time. So um, I didn't get it right and I'm much better at it now, but still some days I fall down. So the boundary is my role and responsibility as a wife and then understanding what that means in a very professional capacity. So I wouldn't behave and say to my husband, maybe F off in the middle of a, a business discussion because I wouldn't behave like that if I was in the workplace. Mm. So it was very clear and distinct for me that, and Dave would just, would say is this work or is this wife and i would have to i would have to physically make that shift change to go back to work so that was a big one so defining the roles because they are different um and i think another boundary is it has to be fun you know we we do have a lot of wives uh, and a lot of that is because it's also about us um delivering compromise in what we do what we have learned uh, over the uh, uh, an extended period of time is what our true skills are and what value we bring to the business and um, so that is irrespective because we already do that in our marital life but the distinction between the work life is you know I wanted to do everything and I had to do everything and Dave allowed me just to keep messing up and kind of finding a way of looking and learning no disrespect to it or discredit to, to clients but I had to do and take control of everything that was how I was going to learn and he let me and I think if I'd been with somebody else who didn't allow that it might not have worked so I think you've got to and, and you, you said you, patience is yeah a yeah boundary. and you you were also thrown in the deep end fairly early on you know I remember once we, we went to see good family friends of ours now with a client in Chicago and um we left Denver to go there via, on, our way, on our way to Dallas. We decided to go to Chicago. That doesn't make any sense, does it? <laughs> uh, so, Europeans, right? So we didn't think about where we were going. And uh, we ended up getting there at four o'clock in the afternoon and after a 10 o'clock flight, not a good uh, spend of time. We then get a delay with car hire. We go to the place and as soon as we arrive, the client unfolds all of their worries and wants in their situation, which is why we flew in there. And Debbie experienced this this awful thing in our line of work where the moment you pull up where the client is, there's no preparation time. You're live. And uh, and that was a that was a baptism of fire, wasn't it, for from your for you experiencing the sharp edge of some of our work sometimes. And many of our team don't like that. Well, we'll be in a situation where you'll face something. you I remember once with Katie who worked with us once and driving halfway down Britain go into a meeting, we pull up on the drive, the, the client comes out from their office, and even though we've been driving for five hours to get there, the client was live. And there's no, let's get ready, let's have a cup of tea or a coffee. This was, you're on. And that, that really cemented, I think, some of the advancements, because you, you spent quite a bit of time reviewing that mm. and reflected on that. 
from my perspective, I think there was um, a key moment that, from a boundaries perspective, that leads into communication too. We have a best version business framework. We used to call it a success framework. And it became my excuse. So if I saw Debbie acting out of character or being, you know, animated and passionate about her points, maybe even let's be let's be candid, blindsided, naive, maybe naive's too harsh. Just can't see the wood from the tree. So her view is stronger than than what she's thinking. Then the framework would give us a place to go, hold on. What does that say? What have we already agreed? And that would allow us both to take a, a significant step back. And, and it's no longer Dave's calm or the Debbie is or Debbie's, Debbie's animated. Um, because the key here, Susan, is I knew her intention, right? So if Debbie was arguing with me over anything, whether it was wife or wife hat or work hat, I knew her intention was for the better of me. And that grace is what separated out a massive difference for me. Whereas a partner, this would be worse. Because I would have to question, am I really certain about the intention? And it could be agendas in play. So when you are working with someone who you love, who's your other half, right? It, I think those two critical things for me really matter. I know your intention, right? So there isn't a game yet. Yeah. But I also know, we got to always know our way back to the neutral space. Uh, even if it is, we're in disagreement, we're not doing anything. That was a, that that's a really okay. clear boundary, actually, Susan. That's that was okay. one thing that took us. We got to a point where I am very hot headed, you know, <laughs> so calm, natural. <laughs> um, but we got to a point where, you know, we do have two distinctly different styles. Um, and we're also aware that we're, you know, we're both very capable, competent people. But there are elements in any business, as there would be, irrespective of whether we're married or not, where you have to say, hold on, if we cannot agree, we take no further action. And that was an incredibly powerful and business that, that decision. Was, that wasn't a no either. So that's not oh, going, no, no. If, if we weren't concluding disagreement means no, we just meant not yet. And, and that, that really was empowering for both of yes. us. Um, because sometimes it was only Debbie had to work out what she was thinking herself. Right, so. so guys, how we move as a couple working together and advice for couples who are not working on the same field, they're not working on the same structure, but now they need to work under the same roof. I have the feeling that the boundaries, communication and rules can be translated to two people who has been for a long time together, they love each other, but 24 seven can be complicated. Completely, and I think one of the, the interesting things for that is space, and a very definitive boundary around space. And we're very fortunate, we live in a lovely home where we can have separate rooms and separate allocations within our house. Uh, but I actually think um, understanding how your other half works, and that's going to be quite novel for some people right now as well, understanding how they work. So I'm in an internalizer, Dave's an external, so understanding that by default, we both have two very different working um, patterns. Dave is very um, structured, I'm very loose. I kind of want to go, no, I'm not that loose, with regards to, uh, I, I, like to I like to feel I've got freedom and don't like the rules, which is one of our things to talk about. So I think space is really important and it might just be an allocation of a chair. And I was, I was actually coaching somebody about this the other day. So it was irrespective of whether you live in a one bedroom apartment or a mansion, having a definitive defined space whether it be a stool or a chair or one end of the dining table to the other end of the kitchen work unit whatever it is and whatever works within your own constraints is that then becomes your workspace and when you're in that zone there's a direct association and that definitely works for us um, as, a, as a working partnership but I also know from people giving me feedback is that's working for them so it's, it's also but, but also there's growth in that too so how I work today personally I didn't work like this five years ago okay. so, so as I've grown and desired different things to become more effective in my own way it allows me to because this is this is a new thing for me isn't it you know I, I remember setting up only in the last five years a non-office based official place for me to work and that that really reinforces for you Debbie about how important that is 
and, and knowing that, because well, we spent a bit of time recently doing this lockdown, what I actually went through to the big large open area in the house and was working through there too. So we were, we were in each other's space even more. And actually that disrupted you more than anything, didn't oh, it? Because I was in, the, in, my space. in a place that she could meander about it. So, but I, I, I definitely think, going back to your question, I, I think environment, having a bit of space to work in is super, super important. And I think another really important one, Susan, uh, particularly if you've never worked together, is having some really clear boundaries about times. So it's having specific times. So if we start at this time, we're going to finish. Now, whether you, you start at different times, but the ability to say, this is the end of this conversation. As of tomorrow, we're not going to talk about this until nine o'clock in the morning, eight, whatever it needs to be. And, and also, there's, there's a fallout to this, right? Sometimes it's quite natural. You could be, forgive me, Susan, for a moment, lying in bed together, right? It's in the morning. Really? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> uh, sorry, that was too exciting. Wasn't it? <laughs> but you, 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 you're in bed in the morning, you maybe have a coffee, it's very, very early, and um, you've relaxed a bit, you haven't chat, and suddenly one of you, or Brahma in this case, you might do it more yeah. often than me, will bring up some work things. I will hold my nerve and not go deep on any work conversation in that environment. Why? Because as a, as a guy, and I don't know whether you ladies feel similar, I don't want too much work in the bedroom, right? From an intimacy perspective, yeah, I, I have so many things that I can say right now, but I, this is going to get really, really <laughs> delayed, delayed, related to another. And like, I know it, I know it, the three of us guys, so we can go like forever. Anyway, I, I think I hope you know what I meant. Is... Yeah, so uh, I think it's like, okay, if we're working together on the same company, or at least working together in the same space, like we're not gonna see each other like nine to five. So mm -hmm. nine to five, we're gonna talk about business and maybe when cooking together is like, how was your day? Tell me about it. Not but venting every conversation and every mail that you have, venting and putting in the other person and the backpack what they're already problems they have. So I think that the boundaries is like, let's look for a place where, okay, oh, here is we start, here we end. We're not talking about it. And even though you have the, need to do it be kind with the other person like remember that we agree we're going to have this rule i know it's important for you but if we keep breaking the rules we're going to start uh, irritating each other and this is not going to be an experience that we don't know how long it's going to take and we're going to hurt each other and i think most of the people who's been saying oh i'm going to divorce my partner is like step up think about it this is our circumstances has nothing to do only to un be under the same roof work-wise tension don't know what to do this was suddenly some people went from leaving the office at five receiving an email at eight o'clock you're not coming to the office it was too fast too soon so uh, what is the advice you will give to people who already pick up the phone and says hey how much is going to cost me to get divorced of this one and why i actually so i think there's two things i think anybody who is currently even jumping to that as a conclusion is either so there's two camps for me is either the relationship wasn't strong and it's not for me to judge anybody's relationship but there was always a crack or there was always something that was there that it was it was in it was wasn't stable so it was always going to happen it just so happens that right now it's condensed and here it is and it's in exposure so maybe it was always going to happen i don't nobody can actually answer that can they but i actually think if somebody feels that the other person is is irking them for whatever reason and it could just be you have to look within and say what is it that's really upsetting me? what is it that's making me uncomfortable because all i'm doing is deflecting on the other person candidly i am blaming the other person for me being pissed off me being upset me not dealing with the situation me being fearful me you know i might be losing my job i could there's so many different emotions that are so high right now it's, it's easier to deflect and pass that to the person that you love the most or the person that you spend the most time with or the least amount of time with ultimately if you've not worked with them um, in the same space before so i think you've got to start and go back and, and it's a pause moment it's the why am I kicking off right now? Am I really pissed off with them or am I actually just upset with myself? And I think that, that tiny nano moment of pause is a really powerful way of actually learning what it is that's annoying you. And, and, and it might be then. And I'd go a step further because I, I think that Debbie is right. For some many people that might be the right answer. 
in the pause, I'd go deeper, much deeper, because I think there's two other issues here, right? A person being in these circumstances where they lack a skill and capability is creating a story that's not true, right? And what will happen is they'll end up in a new situation where they'll have the same skill that could even be a professional one, right? Where suddenly they've taken all the wrong actions. Whereas the first question I'd be asking in a pause moment is, do I love this person unconditionally? Regardless of what has just happened, right? It doesn't matter. I might still answer the question with a yes and still feel the same way as I did earlier. But if I still love that person unconditionally and it's 100%, right? Then you should pause altogether and say, I'm being really irrational here and then ask your question. If you're thinking about leaving and you're 100% certain, the COVID-19 has got nothing to do with it. Yeah. But if it's 99%, right? So, so I've got some strong views about am I romantic, right? If it's 99%, right? So uh, <laughs> if I'm going, should I leave Debbie, for example, and I'm 99%, there's 1% left on the table. And I, in, increment, in the aggregate of incrementals, that's enough to win a gold medal, right? So I will check myself out till I'm 100 and I won't act. It's my personal values, they're not the right or wrong ones to have, but I, I think people quit too quickly. And if they're 100% no, Susan, this has got nothing to do with what we're going through. This is just an excuse. And they've got to be really honest with themselves too. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that, is a, that is where real courage has to come to the conversation. Um, but if somebody's got a skill gap, that would terrify me on their behalf if they're listening, because you're going to have to learn this lesson again afterwards. And just one very quick final point. I think what can also happen and what triggers some of these uh, disjointed behaviours is when somebody goes to work, they can put on a mask, they can put True. on a, that's a, not a double... Um, pick up with everything going on but in regards to it they could be <laughs> uh, they could be acting to be somebody else in the workplace and then come home and be but they are still that same person Correct, yeah. and I think suddenly people feel like they've been caught out they behave differently in work than they would at home why that's always my biggest question when I'm coaching somebody why are you a different person at work than you are at home if you're more caring at work and you're not nice at home then you know, you've got to sort your shit like because yeah. you're being nice to work colleagues and not what you love. I have a behavioral answer for that because okay. I was researching that. Um, and I talk with a behavioral psychologist who work with couples as we ask the people that all love us the most to put up with things that we wouldn't ask to people who is not people who love us because you know me because you love me you're gonna put up with my bad mood but me my boss doesn't love me he's gonna fire me so i think that is the first reason so when i'm in a relationship somebody getting to me is like i do understand it has nothing to do i'm only the recipient to somebody else anger so i'm gonna allow you to vent but i'm not gonna allow you to emotionally punch me and more than one time it's like wait I I'm sorry you're right like it's not about to be right it's about that I'm acknowledging that and I want you to acknowledge it too because again I have a bad day and I can lose it sometimes so the next time then I do that with you just remember me then I'm mad with somebody else but because yeah. you love me because you care about me friends couple kids whatever I'm taking it with you because I'm allow you our relationship allow me to do it because I feel safe being mad and venting because you're not gonna use it against me, you're not gonna hurt me, you're not gonna come back and say, Oh, you was a bitch yesterday, or you was a, a, a an asshole, I'm gonna say it. And it has nothing to do. That's the new reality and it, it can be a reality happen every day in another relationship. So I really want to appreciate guys how open and sincere we're about everything. I only have one question. Debbie, when you met Dave, he was wearing the steel because he's Irish, so he wore steel. No, all Scottish, the time. Scottish. No, Scottish, Scottish, I'm sorry. No, he didn't wear his kilt when I first met him. So uh, it's a new thing? Uh, past eight years, nine years, yeah, yeah eight to nine years. He's been uh, he wears it every day. And he actually does wear it every day. Uh, and it was under my. I actually said he needed to define who he was and be the most comfortable with him. There's a there's a bigger story where he's been told by somebody yeah, to part, dress a certain. Partners, said, uh, yeah. partners have said to me, and, 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 you, and, and there's multiple layers to the story, and like you said, but 
Um, he said, I oh, know some clients won't like it. And actually, in the end, we just went, Sod it. We had a bit of a laugh. This is really it was a laugh at first, because Debbie said to me, I bet you can't do this for a whole year. And I went, I bet I can. We're quite competitive as well. Right. <laughs> There's, uh, before, before we come back to the uh, answer to your question or any other you have, I must, I must give anyone listening one last really important tip that when you reach a point where in normal business we call it an impasse season, we refer to one of our greatest friends in business, Colette Bell in, in the USA, uh, who I, I was lucky enough to meet in the most hostile situations way before Debbie got involved. And uh, we both commit to, when we go to her as a mentor, she has the deciding vote. She also doesn't decide, which is marvelous. That's what I really like about that. She actually doesn't say you now have to go and do this. She she steers us into a place of equal decision. And at that moment in time, we both sign up to that's the decision. So we've had what twice that's happened. Both are very serious matters. Excuse me, where pardon me, Dave. Where uh, hang on, let me just. <laughs> but in that moment in time, Colette then listens to the reasoning and arguments that we both feel strongly about um, and then says, right, well, this is what I think is reasonable. What are you going to do about it? And then we work that solution out, which actually is a real tip. It's a super tip, whether it's a coach or a mentor. If you're listening to this, uh, you know, go back to the last question. They're about to call the divorce person. If you've not got support, in, you don't know whether you've done enough yet. You know, the raft isn't quite sinking. What if you could set those boundaries, develop another space, go and do other things, as well as work together and love this life that you're living? Living. Why do you do that? See, because so I like it. He it's does funny. those things. It's really funny, so. <laughs> when you have to balance off. <laughs> really? I agree. Yeah. What do I think? Yeah, I think you've got to stop doing that. Uh, Siri, <laughs> Siri thinks it's funny too. He's just, look, you just said, you just said apparent. <laughs> guys it's a pleasure to have you uh, uh it's not that we take the, the the situation lightly but i think that uh it's a positive thing beside what everything is happening and again it's freaking me out how many people is thinking about uh, to get divorced and breaking relationship for a long time so i think that you two were a good example that you can survive it yep. can be done it's about boundaries communication and rules and yeah. doesn't mean that they're going to need to be forever is for for today so thank you very much for being so open <laughs> and i hope we can help with these other people who are, are under the same roof or oh, they start thinking working together because you know what the best the best partner in business in crime that you can have is the partner in life so all the coaches that I know they're being so really successful is because they're working with their partners, even though they do the accounting or the booking, whatever. But most of the people that I know they really made it is because they're working with a partner. So maybe instead to look at it as a problem, start looking at as a solution. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. See you next.